Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about merge conflicts, which happen all the time. <laughs> and uh, I want to show you how to handle them and maybe make you a little bit more confident in them so you don't freak out when you see them. They're a fairly common part of development, and unfortunately, they're a little bit tricky to deal with when you see them for the first time. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone a get repo. And I'm going to intentionally trigger, oops, intentionally trigger a merge conflict. Uh, <laughs> now, this part isn't as important for actually resolving them, but uh, we're going to pretend that I had made a feature branch from this version here, uh, my feature branch. And let's say that I had added something to the readme down here. This is some additional text in the readme. Readme, cool. Uh, we had added that and we had committed this, my readme feature, whatever. And uh, let's just set the upstream so that it, uh, so get status says the right thing. And then I noticed, oh, I'm one commit ahead, but I'm two commits different from the branch that I'm tracking. Notably, I'm behind the changes that have been made upstream. And so I would go to pull them. I'm going to show you both a uh, pull conflict, a merge conflict, and I'll show you a rebase conflict as well. Because I actually find rebase conflicts very confusing, even, even to this day. Uh, so let's say that I notice I'm behind and I go to pull. So I did get pull origin main to pull in. I think you can actually just do origin head. I think about it. Uh, and oh no, we got a merge conflict. Uh, so you'll see that we get conflict, merge conflict in README. If we say get status, it'll tell us that we're, uh, we've are we got unmerged paths and it'll tell us that both of us modified this. So both the upstream part and myself. And the messaging here gets a little bit confusing. So uh, it's at least correct with with merges, but it, it's backwards for rebases, which we'll show in a second. Um, but as soon as, or as long as this is red, we are in a merge conflict state and we need to resolve that to continue. Uh, there's also, I believe, a little file inside here. Merge, yeah, merge message, merge head, merge mode. These three files uh, tell you that you're in a merge at the moment. Uh, don't worry about that. That's internal stuff if you're ever scripting this. Uh, but anyway, we want to open up this file and resolve any of our conflicts. Now, I don't have any special merge conflict tooling, but there are a lot of tools in this space that help you with this. Uh, there's also configuration options to get that make this look a little bit different, but I'm basically just using stock get, and so I'll show you what it looks like here. Uh, so next I wanna look for merge conflict markers in this file. And typically they are this for the beginning of the first chunk, then there will be a equals for the chunk of the second part, and actually, <laughs> This is kind of funny. Git has actually messed up the, the markers here. It should have shown this content um, here, but weird. Uh, but anyway, it'll show these markers around where the merge conflict occurs. And again, you know, this is a good example of the merge conflicts can be tricky, so you got to be very careful to show what changed in which side. Uh, now, usually what I do if I'm confused in a merge conflict I will do, uh, I will look at the difference in the merge base before my branch and upstream. So I will do git merge base, my feature branch, and then origin head. This will get us the commit that I differed from, which yeah, we checked out from this commit originally. And then you can do git diff that command, and bang bang is a shortcut for the entire thing here. Uh, with origin head. And so this will help you understand what changed between your branch and the remote branch. Just to show you that command completely spelled out, uh, git diff, git merge base, my branch and origin slash head. There's actually a shortcut for this. If I do git diff, uh, my feature branch, and then three dots, origin slash head, that'll show that same thing there. So that's what that three dots is. I think I did a video on this, so I will try and remember to link that in the description. Uh, but this can help you understand what changed on the other person's branch or the, the upstream branch versus what changed on your branch. And so it'll give you a better idea of what things you need to keep, when things you need to delete so that you don't accidentally reintroduce the thing that upstream either deleted or changed. 
Um, so what I usually do is I look for those markers. I usually look for the less and less and less than one because this denotes the start of this. And then we'll see what's in the middle of these things. Now we want to keep this content. This is the stuff that we added and we definitely know that that's correct. So I usually like to move it outside of the markers. And we know that upstream, based on looking at this diff here, deleted this chunk of code here. So I'm going to do that same thing here. And that is going to quote unquote resolve our merge conflict. So we have fixed the source of this file to no longer conflict. Uh, and now if we do get status, you'll see nothing has actually changed here. We've just fixed it in the source code, but we need to tell git that we've fixed this. And the way you do that is by doing git add. So we will add that file. Uh, you can actually take a look at your merge conflict resolution in a three-way diff by doing git diff dash dash staged. Um, and you'll see here that we basically just reapplied the same change that had happened upstream. We've just deleted this chunk. Now, some three-way diffs will be a little bit more confusing. There'll be two sets of pluses and minuses. Uh, I, I don't try and understand how the three-way diffs look. They're, they're, they're confusing to me. Um, anyway, once you have added this file, you need to commit to resolve the merge conflict. Uh, my recommendation when resolving a merge conflict is to just use the default commit message. Don't change it whatsoever. And you can do that by just typing git commit. Uh, and you'll get this message that says merge whatever into my feature branch. Leave that alone. You want the default merge message. Uh, and it'll tell you what conflicted here. So sometimes uh, it may make sense to uncomment this just so that you can communicate to your viewer what happened. I usually leave it alone. Uh, you know, use the default merge messages. That way it's less confusing when somebody tries to look at your branch history in the future and tries to figure out like, oh, what merged in what place. This is very explicit and you can see where the, the merge happened. So we will uh, exit that. And yeah, and so that's how you resolve a merge conflict. Uh, <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, and pre-commit has special knowledge about merge conflicts so that it knows to check stuff. So this is just unrelated, cool feature of pre-commit. Okay, so that's a merge conflict. I also wanted to show you a rebase conflict because they are confusing. Um, you'll, you'll notice that when we did the merge conflict there, it had an arrow that pointed at head and then an arrow that pointed at our stuff at the bottom. And you know that, that was the order of it. If we go back to where we were before we resolve this, commit my feature. And instead we do a rebase. So if we do get pull origin head dash dash rebase, this will do a rebase instead of a merge. Uh, you'll see here that uh, we have to open this file up again. We look for those merge conflicts and you'll notice that this is actually flipped. We've got an empty block here and this block down here. Um, and Git will often say this is like ours versus theirs, and it's flipped the rebases, which annoys and confuses me. Uh, but we'll do the same resolution that we did before. Oops. Take the content that we want to keep, and then delete the content that upstream changed as well. And for rebases, you still add the file. So git add the shoe. And instead of doing git commit, you do git rebase dash dash continue, and that will continue the process and, and finish applying your patch on top of that. So that's kind of the difference there. Um, I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get ours versus theirs here, but uh, <laughs> maybe that'll be another time. But yeah, uh, basically you want to resolve anything that's conflicting and then continue with your, your process. And you'll see here we end up with just one commit ahead, whereas when we resolve the merge conflict up here, I didn't run get status, but it would have said uh, two commits ahead from one commit and then the merge commit. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.